subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. So now they have given a system continuous time LTA system where the uh, input and output are related by these equations. So this is a basically defining the system and they are asking you for the impulse response of the system and then they are asking you to check causality of the system. So we have seen that to check causality of the system we can just look at the impulse response of the system. If the impulse response exists for values of t less than 0 we say that the system is non-causal and if it does not exist for values of t less than 0 we say that the system is is causal right. So once we have calculated this HT impulse response system we can check causality easily fine. Now see when you look at the equation relating the input and the output you see that there is an integral operation and we have already seen that if we are convoluting any input any signal with a unit step signal we are going to we are having something some integral operation. So one idea we uh, that we have is that we are having we are going to have some unit step functions in the impulse in this impulse response of the system right. So uh, this is how they are relating this output with the input y t is equal to 1 by t integration t minus t by 2 to t plus t by 2 x tau d tau. Right. Now I know that whenever I am convoluting a signal with a unit step signal I am having integral operation starting from minus infinity to some limit wherever my uh, shifted uh, unit step signal lies. So what am I trying to do is I am trying to change the lower limits of this integral to minus infinity. How am I going to do this? I am just using some properties of integration ok. So what do I do? I am taking this common. If I keep the lower limit as it is and take upper limit as minus infinity x tau d tau and then for the next integral I am taking lower limit as minus infinity and upper limit same as the question. Uh, now using see I have just used this property of integration ok you can break limits like this. If you have any integral which has limits a to b x tau d tau what I can I do is I can make this limits from a to c and then other limits from C to B ok this is this is uh, possible. So I have just used that property. Now what do I do? I need minus infinity as lower limit. So I can just inverse the limits and put a negative sign here just simply using uh, properties of uh, integration minus infinity to t plus t by 2 x tau d tau minus minus infinity to t minus t by 2 x tau d tau right. So this is what my integration integral looks like. Now see uh, I saw that ok I am just comparing this with on comparing with if I had integration from minus infinity to t of x tau d tau I would have said that this was convolution of x tau with x t with u t this would have been my convolution of x t with u t ok we have seen this previously whenever I am convoluting a signal with u t I am going to obtain time varying area of the signal integral of the signal from minus infinity to t right this is t. Now I am having integration from minus infinity to t plus t by 2 which means that which means that this would have been convolution of x t with u of t plus t by 2 right just just compare this with this equation ok. Since here limit was t I had u t here since limit is t plus t by 2 I am saying that this would have been this must have been convolution of this x t with u of t plus t by 2 right minus convolution of x t with u of t minus t by 2. Now since we know that this convolution operator is an associative operator distributive operator what can I say? This is x t convolution 1 by t u of t plus t by 2 minus u of t minus t by 2. Now this is going to be a pulse ok this is a pulse. So if I just try to sketch this pulse ok uh, firstly we are going to tell them the impulse response of the system. So what do I say?
H T for this system is going to be just comparing this ok Y T is X T convolution H T. So, I, if I just compare H T is going to be impulse response of the system is going to be 1 by T u of t plus t by 2 minus u of t minus t by 2 right. Uh, if I just try to sketch the signal, so this is a step of size 1 by t which begins at minus t by 2. which begins at minus t by 2 and then a step of minus 1 by t at t by 2 right. So, this is ho how this is what my impulse response looks like ok. So, we had to find and sketch impulse response. So, this is my impulse response and this is the sketch of impulse response. Now, they are asking if the system is causal. Now, see we have already discussed that if h t if h t is 0 for t less than 0 we say that the system is causal. But if you just look at this graph here my h t is not 0 for t less than 0 even for time instances less than 0 we have definite h t we are having values of h t defined. So, the system is not causal this is going to be a non causal system ok. Since, since h t is not 0 for time instance is less than 0. So, this is how only by looking at impulse response of a system we can comment about its causality, stability, memory and etcetera ok fine. Fine, so now they have given us a system which is formed by cascading two different systems ok. These are two individual systems with individual impulse responses H1 T and H2 T. We are cascading these two systems to form a single system with impulse response H T. So, they are asking you that when you are cascading two systems like this what is going to be the combined impulse response of the complete system. Also they are asking you about the stability of the system. So, once we find out the impulse response of the system we can find stability by checking if the impulse response is absolutely integrable or not ok we have seen this condition fine. So, uh, already we studied that if two systems are cascaded then their uh, combined impulse response is going to be the convolution of two. Again we are going to see this concept. Suppose when I uh, apply x t to this system I am obtaining an output w t right w t. Now, this w t which is output of the first system is going to be input to the second system. So, what can I say? I can say that w t is going to be convolution of x t with h 1 t and what is going to be y t? This w t acts as input to the second system right. So, y t is going to be w t convolution h 2 t. Now, if you just put in the values of w t here this is going to become x t convolution h 1 t convolution h 2 t. Since we know that this is a associative operator this performs associatively this this equation is also going to be equal to this one right x t convolution h 1 t convolution h 2 t. Now, if you just look at this second diagram what can I say y t is going to be here I can say that y t is going to be equal to x t convolution h t right this this system was formed by cascading these two ok. Now, if you just compare 1 and 2 comparing equations 1 and 2 what can I say h t is going to be equal to h 1 t convolution h 2 t right. So, that is why we say that whenever we are forming a single system single individual system by cascading two separate systems then the impulse response of the combined system is going to be equal to convolution of the individual impulse responses ok. So, by now using this equation I can just find out h t uh, already they have given us h 1 t and h 2 t I am just putting them here h 1 t is e power minus 2 t u t right convolution 2 e power minus t u t. If I try to perform this convolution this is going to become e power minus 2 tau u tau into 2 e power minus t minus tau u of t minus tau d tau 
right now when i am going to multiply these two pulses we have discussed this before these two pulses are going to exist only for values of t greater than 0 and for t uh, for tau 0 to t okay we can see uh, look at this again this is how u tau looks like this is going to exist only for values of tau greater than 0 if i try to sketch u of t minus tau Okay, u of t minus tau, firstly I am sketching u of t plus tau. So, this is going to be u of t plus tau for t less than 0 and this is going to be u of t plus tau for t greater than 0. Now, if I just perform reversal in this signal, u of t minus star is going to look something like this for t less than 0 and like this for t greater than 0. So, these two signals u tau and u t minus star are going to have intersection only for values of tau between 0 and t ok only for instances between 0 and t these two signals are coexisting and only when t is greater than 0 if t is less than 0 these two signals are not going to have any intersection. So, what can I write I can just modify the limits and change them from 0 to t. 0 to t because these two signals had intersection only for these values right and both the signals had value 1 so I can just eliminate them this becomes e power minus 2 tau into 2 into e power minus tau minus t into e power plus tau d tau and in multiplication I am having u t why because this this integration is going to exist only for values of t greater than 0 if t is less than 0 this complete integration is going to become 0 right because only for t greater than 0 these signals are having some intersection. So, I multiplied with u t now if I try to perform this integration. So, I can they take this 2 e power minus t outside integration right inside integration I am going to have e power minus tau right when you multiply these two into d tau limits from 0 to t and multiplication I am having u t. So, this is going to become 2 e power minus t integration of the signal is going to be minus e power minus tau 0 to t and u t. If you just put the limits you are going to obtain minus e power minus t minus minus 1 ok just on rearranging you are going to obtain 2 e power minus t into 1 minus fine. So, this is going to be my overall impulse response ht ht of the overall system right this is h t. We, we have obtained this by convoluting individual impulse responses. Now, to check if the system is Bebo stable complete system I need to check if this h t is absolutely integrable or not ok. We are going to see that now. So, what I need to check is if this mod of h t is absolutely integrable or not that is mod of h t d t integra integration of mod of h t is a finite number or not ok it's less than infinity right. So, what do I do see since this is not having any complex number mod of this is going to be the same signal but, but since this signal had u t in multiplication limits are going to change from 0 to infinity since u t is going to u t is going to make this signal exist only for values of t greater than 0 and till infinity. So, the limits become 0 to infinity inside the integral I am going to have 2 e power minus t minus 2 e power minus 2 t into d t. Now, I have just performed this integration this is going to be minus 2 e power minus t limit 0 to infinity minus 2 ok if you just put the limit what are you going to obtain 
if you put infinity here e power minus infinity is going to be 0 minus if you put the limit at 0 you are going to obtain 1 minus and this is going to cancel this is going to become plus minus minus is going to become plus again e power minus infinity is going to be 0 minus 1. So, what do I obtain? I obtain 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. Since 1 is less than infinity, 1 is less than infinity that means that this ht was absolutely integrable and the system is going to be a stable system. Given system is a stable system, right. So, this is how we are checking stability of a system using its impulse response. Fine.